Uh, what's up everybody? We're back. Green Valley Ranch once again checking out the bubble crabs. Uh, we got the $1 minimum and we're going to be working the same system that we've been working. Um, I recently had a viewer ask me to kind of break down the system so I'm going to attempt to do that right now for you and uh, maybe you guys can offer me some guidance or some suggestions as well. Um, basically, I mean right now we don't have really have a 7 machine so... Um, we're going to kind of take that in consideration. It looks like the 4s and the 10s are showing up, so we're not going to use those as a lay. Um, on our first step, we're just going to go in the don't pass. Um, basically, what I like to do is I like to play for the dark side. I find that the 7 rolls more often than not, so that's what I like to target. Um, essentially, we're looking for the 2, 3, or the 11 right here. Um, excuse me, the 2 or the 3. Um, the 7 or the 11 is going to kill us. The 12 is going to be a push, but we'll start hedging as we get into bigger units. Um, but for now, we're going to see what happens. Let's go. So we got an 11 there, and that's unfortunate for us. We're going to lose it right there, but um, we're just going to kind of roll with it for now. We're going to take that into consideration. Um, we can always make up for it when we add odds or when we um, add a come bet later on. And that's kind of the good side of the system is that um, there's more ways to make up for a lost unit than one. So let's keep it going. All right, there we go. So we get it back, and that's what we like to see. So we are back to even everybody $20 and we're just gonna rinse and repeat without that hedge once again um, it's nice we want to see the fours and the tens disappear and then we can get more comfortable all right that is a 10 and that's a favorable scenario so when I get the four and the five the nine or the ten I tend to want to go a little bit heavier I'm a little more conservative on the six and the eight so essentially right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, one dollar in odds and I'm gonna add a come bet and essentially what the come bet allows me to do is I capitalize on a seven right here if not I get to um, it'll establish on one of the box numbers and then hopefully we get a repeater and you're taking advantage of both sides um, as we keep putting adding come bets we're gonna increase our odds over here to try to make up for the fact that if the seven rolls we want to get those but the come is also a hedge against the seven as well because if um you do have a bunch of come bets up here or excuse me um if you roll a bunch of numbers and you um establish your come bets um you do get a chance to hit them up top as, as opposed to just losing them so let's get it excuse me on the point not a seven all right, so that is a six. We don't mind that. We prefer the six and the eight on the come bets. Um, I did mean, let me clarify that. I meant the point. So if you hit the point, you don't lose all your bets up here. If you hit the seven, obviously you're going to lose everything. But that is the beauty of it. The come bets actually turn into, um, you get two attempts at them if your point gets pegged off rather than just losing it with your seven on the double pass. All right, so we get the seven there. That's going to be the benefit of the system. So we get back three dollars there. We lose one dollar on the come bet. We'll bring it down, and we're at twenty-two. So we gain two dollars pretty easily. Um, we're in control. We're with a very shallow buy-in as well. That's something to consider. Is um, really the system is something to make work with a shallow buy-in. I've only needed to go around thirty to thirty-five units. Um, I've, I've won with it every time I've played with it. So we're hoping to continue that right now. But I just kind of want to um, put my thought process out there, break it down a little bit. All right, seven out, so we don't like that. And um, that's where we wish we had the hedge, or if we start getting a lot of sevens, like right now, what we'll do is look for the number that hasn't rolled, which is a four. And I'm gonna go ahead and put three dollars. Sometimes I'll put four on it. I'll put four just for this instance. And if we get another seven, we're gonna actually throw it. All right, that's a nine. So we don't hit our hedge, which is what we like. So we get a, a favorable result, which is a nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the odds. And essentially, if you look at it, uh, this come bet will make up for um, the previous loss or this one, and all the other ones are gonna be profit. So let's see if we can get a profit out of this. Five. Opposite of the nine. We're going to keep the come bets coming. Right now, we're still in a good situation. I don't need to increase the odds yet because I think I'm making roughly 286 or something right around there with the way this is. So let's see if I can get it right here. Seven out, four to five. All right, that's a 10. And that's the least favorable result on the come bets because those are the hardest ones to hit, the fours and the 10. But now this is where I'm going to increase odds. So now I'm setting myself up because if the seven rolls, I'm going to lose these up here and I still want to profit. It doesn't have to be a, a huge profit, but we want to make sure we are profiting. All right, so that's a six. And this is the point where I start to decide if I um, have too many come bets out there. I'm really comfortable on the four or the 10 kind of getting a whole spread. Sometimes on the nine or the five, you get pegged off and um, we are working with a small bankroll. So you want to be considerate of where you're at, but we're going to go one more. Um, this will probably be the max of what I'll do. One shy of a full board. Let's see if we get the seven out or a repeater. All right, so look at we're going to get the full board and now we have four bets up top. So I'm going to add one more right here. It won't let me. So we'll just roll with it like that. And uh, we're going to hope to get a repeat or four, five, six or ten. Clear them out. And then uh, we'll get the seven after those. All right, so we get the five. So we're going to clear that out. And that's what I like. 
Um, and I won't go ahead and add any cum bets yet. I'll see if I can clear some more. We do like banking those units or adding the product. There we go. So we get a seven out. Um, we are going to break even on those. So we gain that one unit. And that's kind of what we like to have happen. So looking back at it, we are at $22. So that means we're completely even for uh, that round right there. And sometimes, you know, with the low roller way uh, or the approach that I have, I'm okay with breaking even. Um, it gets really sticky or um, you get in a precarious position when you have a lot of, uh, your point gets pegged off. You have a lot of cum bets out there. Um, if the seven rolls, you're gonna lose those. So you have to hedge pretty high, but you get into um, some sticky situation. So it's best to just limit your bets um, if you are on a low bankroll. But let's just continue to pound away here, see if we can make it work again. All right, seven out. So we do have a seven machine, it seems. It's starting to roll a lot of seven. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and add. Um, we're gonna try to profit from the seven. Let's see if we can do it. All right, there we go. So as I said, we do have a seven machine. So we're gonna get back um, our previous loss plus 37 cents. And that's kind of how you wanna work it. Um, I, come to, I find that you don't really want to um, risk the lay bet too high um, frequently because if you do get back-to-back -back hits, you get punished, especially if you get a hit there and then you add odds and you get hit there, you get double whammied. So um, it's kind of, uh, you wanna think like chess. You wanna think of your moves ahead and not get yourself into positions you don't like. So now that we have three sevens in a row, um, you know, let's just do, Let's go half hedge, just in case the four gets picked off. We're not losing that much more. All right, eight. So nothing happens, and uh, it's very rare to see four sevens in a row or uh, too many strings of sevens. You're really hoping for a two or a three and hoping that four doesn't come, but I want to mitigate the extreme variance associated with it, so I lessen the bets. may not be optimal, but that's kind of how I like to work it. Um, we do have an eight right here. One thing that I have been implementing is you could go like this, and essentially it's a free roll, so if the eight gets hit, we would win money on the, we're glad we don't have a come bet there. Um, that's worth noting too. I don't like come bets on the six or the eight unless uh, I find myself behind or I'm trying to make up units. But right now I just kind of like to resolve the six and the eight. And um, if we get it right here, we're not gonna lose anything at all. There's no way we can lose, we can only win. So see, if we would have played for the seven, we would have lost. Um, we take a 16 cent gain. It's not much, but once again, it's better than pulling your bet down and um, you have nothing better to do than profit. So why would you pull your bet down? You know, it doesn't make sense to me. But anyways, look at this guys. 2253. We'll take our profits where we can get them. And we're just rinsing and repeating the process and uh, hoping to grind out a win. All right, that's a six. So once again, we don't really like that scenario that much, but we can work with it. So uh, let's just see if we can resolve it. You know what? Let's go naked this time. We'll try to get to seven. If we get a seven, we're going to profit a dollar. All right, that's a five. And if at any time we feel like the six is going to roll, there's no harm in going uh, place on it. So we'll do that right now just as an example sake. If the six rolls, all right, that's a two. If the six rolls, we're going to be in the same position before. Um, we're going to get a 16 cent gain, but there is five ways to roll the six and six ways to roll that seven. So once again, it's not the best proposition in the world. You're still a favorite, but on a limited bankroll, you uh, want to find those opportunities that are better than worse. So eight, I got a feeling the six is going to show up. A lot of times when you get these long rolls, the point gets hit. Eight right back. So we got the repeaters. Uh, a lot of times repeaters signify a long roll. So we'll see what happens here. Ready? Wish I was playing the horns, but the system doesn't entail the horns. I keep it really, really basic. And I think that's what enables me to grind out um, the wins is that basically you're staying in control. Um, unless you really hit the negative side of variance, then uh, you should be all right most of the time. I had that one session back a little while ago where I went down pretty quick, but I was able to recover. So. All right, 11. And once again, right now, this is a free roll. All we can do is win 16 cents. We can't lose anything, so. Man, look at this roll, I'm wasting it. Playing, uh, if you see now, if you're playing combats, these are the rolls you want on the four, five. five. So these are the rolls that you want to see when you have the four, five, nine, or 10 as the point, and you're uh, placing a lot of combats out there. But to be honest with you, whenever I have the four, five, nine, or 10, I don't see the rolls like this. Usually they happen on the six or the eight, so maybe I should reconsider uh, doing something like this and kind of just wasting the rolls. But once again, uh, we're gonna stick with uh, what our plan is, what our system is, and we're not going to worry too much about what could be. We're going to worry about what we're doing and uh, what we can do to get to where we want to be. Nine. Woo. Smoking here. Power press in paradise. Let's go. Eight. How many times we hit that? Eight. Nine, nine, eight, eight. Tons of times. Wow, let's go. My buddy Hunter Killer is going to be giving me a hard time down in the comments. He's going to be like, dude, you missed out on a huge roll. I know. It hurts. 
All right, there it is. So, all right, so as I said, we break even on that, but we're just looking for the good propositions. Once I said, this is kind of a more of a low roller system preservation way to uh, um, optimize, I think, or from my perspective, optimize using a small bankroll or a small buy-in to get the most out of it, potentially. Let's go. Yeah, a lot of times, I'm just looking to grind out a 50% win. Seven out. So we get the seven right there. So we are getting the sevens right now. We're gonna go back to what we were doing. What's the, uh, we don't have any tens for a while. So that's what I like to do is look for. Look at this, guys. We don't have any tens for a long time. The scary thing about that is if they start showing up. But uh, we're just gonna assume that uh, we're gonna manage it. So let's go one in five since we do have a little while since the last time. We almost got punished there. We got a nine though. And once again, that's a favorable result. So this is where we can really take advantage. And I'm gonna juice it up a little bit. You know what? We're ahead. We're feeling good. We have a seven machine. Let's see if we can get that seven right here. All right, that's a five. We already have enough odds. Let's we'll see if uh, we can get that seven out or repeater buzz. Ooh, we got a six. So we don't mind the five, six. Let's we'll see if we can get the eight. That'd be a nice full board, right? Uh, the odds that we have. All right, six. So we like that. That's a repeater. And that allows us to bank that unit. And now I'm going to kind of take a break from playing the come. I'm just going to see if I can resolve it. Eight. All right, so wouldn't have been a bad proposition, but at the same time, we don't uh, necessarily want to get too much out there. Six, there we go. So we're going to take those units. And we should be expecting that seven any time now, so let's see if we can put a combat out there and get that time it right. Oh, that's a six, all right. Once again, we don't mind the sixes. Those are most probable to hit. Um, let's get one more out there since we seem to be going on a lot of and that's an eight so all right now we're gonna put one more in odds and uh, essentially we're doing a little less than breaking even but we're trying to get a repeat or five six eight there we go so we get the uh the hardest one to hit that we have out there let's go let's get a six or an eight no combat that's a four so really happy we didn't do a combat there i'm actually going to actually you know let's roll with it let's get a six or an eight that's a ten so once again we're glad we didn't have the combats you really want to manage those um, as best as you can. Let's keep it rolling until we get a six or an eight hit. And that's a seven. So we'll take that. It's going to be some profit. We are getting back one dollar profit there, plus those hits that we had. So as you can see, we're at twenty-five fifty-three. We're staying in control. And that, once I, like I said before, um, with a low buy-in, you can't really expect to do too much. So having a system that preserves your bankroll as well as maximizes your opportunities is going to be your best um, your best bet when it comes to um, playing bubble crops, from my experience. But once again, I'm open to all the input that you guys have. I appreciate all the uh, feedback you're giving. So, all right, we got a six. And because we're ahead, I'm going to go ahead and play for the seven. We have a little momentum going, so there's no need to think otherwise now. We have an eight. Let's see if we can get that seven. And um, I do like, once you do get a little bit of a lead or you build up some profit, I like taking more risks. Um, and then you really find out if the momentum is behind you. And that's when you can hit the gas or you just decide to stop and take the profit. But hopefully this, guy's, this um, helps um, articulate what it is that my thought process is or what I'm doing. All right, so we are getting the long rolls, and that's something to take note of, too. Um, sometimes when I start getting the long rolls, what I'll do is start adding the combats into play, because essentially, if you have a limited amount of combats out there, you keep your odds to a minimum. You're just giving yourselves more opportunities. You're um, taking on a little bit more risk, but it seems to be worth it when you're getting the longer rolls. But there we go. So momentum's on our side. We're feeling it. Let's go. We have uh, 26.53 in the bank right now. We are 13 and a half minutes in. We're just going to keep it simple. The old saying, keep it simple, stupid. Why fix what's not broken? And that's uh, my motto. And right now the system seems to be the one that uh, isn't broken for me or hasn't broken yet. So let's see if we can keep that going. And we're gonna assume that we're gonna get the seven here. There we go. All right, so we have a seven machine. That's what it feels like it's turning back to. Once you get a long rolls on a machine, usually this happens. I mean, it is completely random or it should be, but my intuition and my experience tells me over time these things tend to even out. Um, I have heard that from other people as well. So let's get a two or a three, rinsing and repeating. Hey, look at that. All right, guys. Whew. Momentum, that's what it's all about. So, demonstrating that as well. All right, 28.53. Let's see if we can get another one. Let's get a two or three right back. All right, that's a five. That's a great opportunity. We'll see if we can pick up three units here, a little bit less than. Let's get that come bet, the odds, and the DP. Let's get that seven out. Ooh, that's a four. We don't like those in the come bet, but we'll work with it. We have the five. We're going to add more to make up for it. We're going to get that seven out or a repeater for it. Ooh, that's a six. All right, we don't mind that. Let's go one more on the combat. Let's go. All right, that's a nine. We got a, as big of a spread as I usually like, but uh, let's add one more. Let's try to peg off a four, six, or nine. 
There we go. So we get the six out of there. That is the uh, most likely to roll. Five ways to roll it. Um, let's go ahead and get a four or nine. That's a seven out. So we're going to profit there. We actually lose two up top, but we gain three. So we gain a dollar plus what we had. And look at that, guys. We are at 30.53. So um, we grinded out our goal. Uh, once again, I wanted to break this down for you guys. Um, I do add a little bit of variation in there sometimes. You know, I don't strictly stick to it, but a lot of it is feel, um, intuition based and whatnot. So we're going to call that a successful session. Once again, the system proves its viability. So let me know if you have any questions, any opinions, any feedback. But we do appreciate everybody. So like and subscribe. We appreciate all support. Come at you from Green Valley Ranch. In for 20 out for 3053. Until next time.